Good morning and welcome to Bryant Wilson Coffee. I'm Bryant, otherwise known as Panama B7 on Instagram. This is a Coffee Talk Saturday. Uh, it's Saturday morning, uh, very early here. Um, in the Midwest, it's, uh, it's a cold morning. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, uh, thank you. Please hit the like uh, and subscribe buttons. Uh, you might also want to hit the bell notification button so that when a, a new video uploads, you're notified. Uh, I'm just spending a few minutes this morning uh, because over the last month, uh, we I have not shared with you uh, Coffee Talk Saturday sessions. It's been about a month since I had the last session. Uh, and I believe that was episode five or episode six. Uh, and so uh, that was the interview that we did with, uh, with uh, my good friend Amy um, at the local Starbucks. So I do plan on having a follow-up interview with Amy. Um, and we're just working out on uh, my last video, which was a review of the Breville Smart Pro Grinder. You see that behind me here. Um, and I wanted to follow up that I've had about two weeks of operation, uh, daily operation of, of the grinder without that little felt uh, pad that goes underneath the impeller, uh, or some people refer to it as a fan. Um, that little felt cushion that goes under there, uh, I won't go into detail, but it got destroyed in the process of cleaning the grinder. And uh, it, uh, I haven't replaced it, but I haven't seen any excessive wear on the, uh, on the underside of the fan or impeller assembly. Um, there's, doesn't seem to be affecting anything. Uh, so I'm not even sure why that was there. It might've been there just to cushion the mechanism uh, as, it, uh, as the burrs go up and down uh, for spacing. That, that might have been the purpose of it, uh, and it may have threw some of the adjustment off. But if it did, it didn't throw it off by much because I have not really changed the setting uh, on the grinder. Right now, I have it set at a 43 for pour over, and that seems to be working out fine. Uh, and uh, when I was pulling the last couple of espresso shots that I pulled using the grinder, uh, I did set it at a seven. That was because I had changed beans using the uh, Yergeshef. Uh, mm. Love the Yergeshef. When it's roasted to a medium, it gives you a, a distinct full body, full bodiedness, and I really love that. Um, the floral notes are still very present. The citrus definitely is there. This is a juicy, punchy um, blend uh, or cup. Uh, it's not a blend, a single origin, but it's, it's very juicy, very punchy. It hits the palate. I just love it. Um, this is one of my, now one of my favorites, now that I know how, to, uh, how, to, how I like it roasted. Uh, in fact, I, I'm going to roast it just a little bit darker. I, I roasted it not to the point where I got oils, but to where it just looked a little waxy. Um, kind of gets that kind of dull sheen to it, to the bean. Uh, I'm going to take it just a little further on the next roast, and I'm going to, uh, to uh, do, uh, uh, go further into the medium try and get just a hint of some oils on it uh, maybe to the to the to the bottom of the of the of the medium spectrum uh, definitely don't want to roast the yoga chef uh, dark definitely don't want to do that because you don't want to destroy that complexity of uh, floral and citrus notes to it but anyway I'm, I digress I'm way off track um, I was explaining that I did pull a couple of shots using the Yerga Chef. This is a pour over today. Uh, when I pulled those, I did change the grinder setting to a seven 
from where I had it set at, I believe it was set at a 10 or a 12. Uh, so what I have found, what this tells me is that the Breville Smart Pro Grinder has a lot of range. It's got a lot of range uh, for both uh, settings of both uh, espresso blend or espresso grind, as well as a more coarse if you're using a pour over with a, a metal filter, such as I have uh, with the Asobu. Uh, and I haven't used paper filters. As a matter of fact, I haven't used paper filters since I started roasting. So I really can't go into, you know, depth on that. But I believe, if I'm if I'm if I'm correct, you're just going to be uh, grinding a little more coarse uh, with a paper filter than you are with a metal filter. And that being the case, the grinder obviously won't have any problem grinding a little more coarse. I don't know what that means, and I've got to explore that some. I had said I wasn't going to get into the technical aspects of grinds and, and such. The only technical part uh, really that interests me uh, at this point in my experience is the roasting. Um, and But what I am going to do though, and I'm not going fully back on what I, what I said that I wasn't gonna get into the technical aspects of the grind, but what I am going to do is I'm gonna get one of those crews uh, sifter devices. Um, it looks like a triangle if you haven't seen it. It's got multiple screens of uh, different uh, uh, diameter openings uh, so that uh, as you sift, uh, the fines go to the bottom and the uh, larger size uh, boulders uh, stay towards the top portions of the sifter, the top screens. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to do a video on that. I don't know exactly when I'm going to have that. We know that we're having problems with logistics, right, in the country, right? Probably in the world, right? So who knows how long it might take me to get one of those sifters. Um, but definitely what I want to do is check that out because it really interests me. It interests me because uh, I'm, I'm learning that the conical burrs, uh, people are saying that there's a flavor difference between the conical burrs and the flat burrs. If this is the case, and if the Smart Pro grinder is on the upper end of an entry level grinder, consumer grinder, it's not at the prosumer level yet, but it's at the upper end of a consumer grinder, a budget entry-level consumer grinder. So if it's like in that mid-range, uh, either above entry-level and at the low middle part, or if it's, you know, wherever it is, it's almost $300 grinder. Wouldn't that mean that I should expect a very consistent and a very high level of results in terms of conical burrs. Now, where I'm going with this is this. There are some grinders, some hand grinders that you can purchase that are in the $300 range, $250 to $300 range. Would a person who is only interested in espresso and pour overs for a couple of cups per, per uh, use and not going into the 10, 12 cup, you know, uh, methods of, of grinding, not trying to grind, you know, uh, 100 grams, let's say, um, but grinding only, you know, upwards of 40 grams, 50 grams maybe tops. Um, would that person be better off using a hand grinder for a conical burr set or would they be better off purchasing a mid-level grinder such as the smart pro that's where i'm going that's the question 
And so I want to get to that question and I want to put just a little bit of uh, data behind it so that it's not a completely subjective result. And uh, I'm going to uh, delve into that area in the, in the coming uh, weeks. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so I've promised you uh, another interview with Amy um, where we're going to look at some of her equipment um, that she uses because she's got a lot. She's got mocha pots. She's got, uh, uh, she's got French presses. I believe she has some pour overs. And Amy also likes uh, tea. She likes matcha tea. And so we're going to talk some about the tea aspect uh, of uh, what coffee lovers uh, usually, you know, sometimes we do venture off into that land where you're, where you're making your own teas. And so I've done it in the past. Uh, in fact, I had uh, what I would consider a pretty decent investment in, uh, in tea brewing uh, equipment for a while. Um, and so we're going to just visit that. It's not a, it's not a landing place, but we're going to visit that <clears throat> and see uh, uh, what Amy has to say about the aspect of tea brewing. Uh, so stay tuned for all of that. Um, the holidays are coming up. Uh, I will have videos out during the holidays. I'm not going to take a break for those. Uh, I've already had enough breaks. Uh, oh, I did get my booster shot for, uh, for Pfizer. And uh, if you out there are intending on getting a booster, I encourage you to do so. Uh, I did, however, get the booster and the flu shot at the same time. Uh, and for 24 hours, I was pretty sick. I was, I was feeling sick as a dog. Um, obviously, I didn't contract anything, but I was having, my body was building those antibodies, I guess it does, it, enzyme? No, antibodies. It was building those antibodies. And, and uh, let me tell you, it was, it was really working. Uh, so whatever's in that, uh, in that, uh, flu shot and the, and, and the, when you have it with the, with the, uh, COVID-19, uh, vaccine, uh, let me tell you, uh, just be prepared to not necessarily be active for about 24 hours, uh, following that, if you get both of them together. So anyway, uh, you know, I hope that fall, autumn as it is in some areas here in the Midwest in Michigan, we refer to it as fall. I hope that it's been treating you well. I hope that you've been enjoying the change in season, seeing the leaves, looking at the little critters outside, running around, scampering, trying to prepare for their winter. And, uh, you know, let's just remember uh, that, you know, we're really in a place where we're blessed uh, to be able to have these changes in seasons here in this country. There's some areas of the country that don't experience this severe change in seasons, but you know, most of the states do experience uh, some change from season to season. We're not in arid climates um, like other countries where they don't get this variety of weather. So instead of, you know, kind of, I'll say cursing, you know, the, the change in seasons, um, Let's kind of be thankful for them because it gives us, you know, a chance to wear nice sweaters, <laughs> uh, coats, boots, hats, to some places. Um, other areas of the country, they get to see a change in foliage and, and uh, vegetation, uh, you know, different flowers that bloom uh, at the end of the season and beginning of the seasons and you know, so we're really lucky. We're blessed uh, to be, uh, to have this uh, land that we have. So let's keep that in mind as we're coming up towards uh, our season of Thanksgiving. I'm Bryant. This is Bryant Wilson Coffee. Thank you for joining. If you haven't already during the broadcast, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell once you're subscribed so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. The video review that I did for the Breville Smart Pro Grinder, I'm going to do a, a little short, uh, do some editing and give you a little short compacted segment of it 
so you don't have to worry about missing anything if you don't have time to watch the full video. I'll try and edit it down to maybe about a, a less than a 10 minute video, give you some of the highlights of what I found with my experience with the Breville Smart Pro Grinder. Find me on Instagram, PanamaB7. As always, thanks for joining.